Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this Saturday mountain weather update. Let's go up to Alta, Utah. Six, seven inches of new snow from this this front that has raced through and now it's over. Drier air is going to be moving in, but you can see the view of the sun trying to break through the cloud cover that's just sort of enveloping the mountain. Uh, you can see the Mount Superior view. There might be a little bit of leftover snow, but this is mainly just cloud cover. So uh, on the tail end of this thing, it's moving out at this point. Let me show you radar. A couple things to mention. You can see the little bit of snow over Utah, Wyoming, parts of Idaho, and eventually that's going to be moving into Colorado this afternoon. I'll zoom in on that in a second, but you can see the precip hitting the Pacific Northwest. That's the next storm system. And this one looks pretty good for BC and a lot of the West Coast. So I'll show you that as well on a water vapor. But let me zoom in. Here's the uh, radar out of Salt Lake. I guess a very small area of snow remaining. Um, again, this is all going to be drying up midday into the afternoon. And then we're going to see about a dusting of snow as this whole thing kind of rotates through Colorado. A dusting of snow over the high peaks this afternoon and tonight there. All right, let me just give you the lay of the land on the water vapor. So on this, oranges and reds are drier air aloft. The moisture is in the whites and the blues. A couple of things to mark. This little storm right here moving through the upper, uh, upper Midwest, Northern Plains, that's what's dragging this cold front through Wyoming and Utah, and that's what's going to cruise and race through Colorado with that dusting of snow this afternoon. Now behind it, the flow reaches way back into the Pacific, and that's an important piece of the puzzle for the extended forecast. So there's another area of low pressure right here. That will be the next one. That's the one that's already pushing this moisture into the West Coast. Eventually, that's going to sink a little bit further to the south drop some snow over the Sierra, and then move into the inner mountain west. And there may be a southern track low that tries to gather up some of this tropical moisture. And then down the road, there's additional energy back here. So a lot of little things in the forecast. I wanted to show you this. So we haven't uh, talked about this since last winter. This is integrated vapor transport. This is how we spot, identify, um, and it helps forecast atmospheric river setups. Uh, this is the IVT forecast for that San Francisco corridor, but leading up into the Sierra. So this particular model thinks that we may be looking at some weak, maybe on the verge of moderate AR moisture by 2021, 22, 23. That's why when you see the numbers coming up, they're so big for parts of the Sierra. Oregon, Washington, BC is because we're bringing in a lot of extra moisture on a conveyor belt. So that's something to watch in the extended forecast. All right, let me show you my timeline. Best odds of snow for the Wasatch, Tetons, Colorado, Tahoe, and interior BC. So for example, um, the next real shot of snow for the Wasatch is on the 18th, light to moderate accumulations, and then heavy on 11:24, 11:25. In Colorado, your next best shot of snow, you might have a little bit of light snow this afternoon. Didn't even put it on here, it's so light, but your next best shot is gonna be on the afternoon, evening of the 18th into the 19th with moderate accumulations, and then moderate to heavy on the 25th. So you can see that second shot looks pretty good for the Wasatch, parts of Colorado, certainly Tahoe, even interior BC because it's loaded with extra moisture. All right, let me just show you what the forecast looks like. So this is the forecast mediogram for Alta, Utah. And this is at about 9,000 feet. So this is Saturday the 16th. In that column, there's the 17th, there's the 18th, and there's the 19th. So if you look down into the snow column, a little bit of leftover snow today, but by and large, we picked up the bulk of the snow. So there's another shot of snow coming through early on the 18th, which could be a couple of inches. And then there's some additional snow on the 19th in the morning, which could be another couple of inches. So we've got snow, we've got additional snow coming after today, 18th and 19th, and maybe again, even beyond this. But I wanted to show you that. Um, and temperatures today at about 9,000, holding at about 20 degrees for the high, tomorrow 25, 26, and 22. So we're looking at 20s at 9,000 feet up there. Okay, let me take a, uh, a look here at Colorado. So this is snow mass ski area. This is the time height forecast looking at humidity for the next 72 to 80 hours. It's a forecast slicing through all the layers of the atmosphere. That's what you're looking at. It's a plan view. Now down at the bottom, that's the timeline. You read that from right to left. So it's the next 72 to 80 hours. And notice the front that comes through this afternoon tonight 
very little moisture, very shallow, not a lot of lift. You can see it afternoon, evening, early tomorrow morning, and then it's over. Drier air spills in, and then here comes that next storm system, mainly on the 19th for a lot of Colorado. You can see the green, and it's a lot deeper than this little front that's coming through this afternoon. So again, that snow mess. Here's how that plays out as far as snow forecast goes. Um, so look down the road, early on the 19th, very late on the 18th, early on the 19th, thinking about four or five inches of snow around Snowmass, Aspen, Buttermilk, and the Highlands. And then there's going to be additional snow after this as well. But that's the, the next storm system. Um, it, it really doesn't even have anything for this little storm, this little front that's going to slide through this afternoon. So that's why I didn't even include it. But it's really on the 19th, early on the 19th for Colorado. That's the next best shot. Okay, here's the jet stream forecast by close of business today. You can see uh, the dip in the jet sliding through, and then it's and then now on the tail end of it, there is the potential. You can see an area of low pressure trying to develop down over the four corners. That will come north and then move out. Immediately on its coattails, next storm system coming out of the Pacific Northwest, moves into the interior through the 19th, and then it's gone. And then now watch the setup. Look at the jet reach all the way back to the Pacific. This is that added moisture, that IVT transport. And that's very interesting. That's a very interesting piece of the, uh, the forecast because by the 22, 23 timeframe, we could be talking heavy precip along the West Coast. And then some of that gets blown into the interior, Idaho, Montana, BC, potentially end up right on the cusp there in the Wasatch. And so watch what happens here on the 24th. A lot of that energy starts to translate into the interior on the 25th and even the 26th. So that could be pretty good. Okay, here is the forecast radar and satellite. Let me start it up here. So here's Saturday. This is this afternoon at 530. Um, by the time we move into Sunday, we're dry across Colorado, dry over Utah. So that front is gone. Now we look to the Pacific Northwest, pretty big storm, a lot of snow, parts of BC, northern Idaho, northwest Montana, Washington State, Oregon. That moves into the interior, but it also brushes the, the Sierra. Oh, and look down in New Mexico, Colorado, that southern track low comes up and just briefly brushes northern New Mexico in extreme southern Colorado. Then that moves away. And then here comes our storm system sliding down through the, the inner mountain all the way through the 19th. There's your best shot of snow on Colorado on the 19th in Colorado. And then that moves away. Now look at the size of that storm system hitting the West Coast. Um, this is going to be uh, quite a period between the 20th and probably the 26th. And it just continues to nail a lot of those areas like a fire hose. And again, some of that overruns into the interior into Idaho, Northwest Montana, BC. And then eventually, watch what happens. I mean, it's just the same areas for days. And then eventually the focus moves in, and then it finally hits the Wasatch and the Tetons by the 24th, and eventually into Colorado by the 25th, and especially the 26th into Colorado. Right there. Another storm hitting the Pacific Northwest. Okay, snow amounts. Here's what I'm thinking uh, all of today through tomorrow. Um, really done with things in the Wasatch, uh, half an inch over the high peaks in Colorado, maybe an inch in a couple places. But it's all about the Pacific Northwest, where we could be looking at about a foot of accumulation through Whistler, the Coastal Range, Baker, Rainier, Crystal, and Stevens Pass. And even the interior parts of BC, BC around Red Mountain and Revelstoke looking really good. Brundage up to Schweitzer could see six, seven inches of accumulation. Now, here is the interesting time frame. A lot going on here, a big flow of moisture off the Pacific. We could be looking at one to two feet through Mammoth and Tahoe, but quite a bit more right where the focus of that, that fire hose comes in with the jet up around Shasta. Um, that is some really good stuff. Mount Ashland, Mount Bachelor, Hood, Timberline, Stevens, Crystal, all the way up to Baker, Rainier, and Whistler. It's going to be measured in feet if this thing plays out. We could be looking at three or four feet. Um, interior BC benefits, and so does Idaho and northwest Montana because of the, the spillover effect, the overrun. We could be looking at one to two feet. A lot of those places, anywhere in pink and purple, is over a foot. Um, in Colorado, a lot of what you see there happens on the 19th, and then again, we start to accumulate snow on the 25th and 26th, so the numbers would continue to go up. About 8 to 12 for the Wasatch and potentially a foot for the Tetons. So 
excellent period right there. I I'm really um, looking forward to this, to see how this plays out. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here on this Saturday. I appreciate it. Take care. Have a great day.